During the absolute horrors of World War I, in the remote regions of the Canovo Vilna Minsk district, a fight for survival between men and beasts raged. Such was the carnage that warring Russian and German troops were forced to declare a temporary truce and join forces in order to defeat a common enemy. In this shocking story we're going to take a look at the time when the weapons of man went up against the rabid maw of the world, the bloody clash of species that is simply known today as the wolf truce of World War I. The incident in question happened in or around the year of our Lord 1914, after tensions between Austria and Serbia ultimately led to the First World War erupting in Europe. Russia and Germany fell onto opposite sides of the war, and some of the worst horrors of modern combat happened on the resulting Eastern Front. Combined with the ravages of Spanish flu, chemical weapons and mechanised war, it is a wonder that Europe had any remaining population left at all. The German and Russian armies clashed near the town of Allenstein in a great battle that became known as the Battle of Tannenberg. The fighting was actually done 30 kilometers away from Tannenberg, but German Field Marshal Paul von Hindenburg named it as such in reference to the First Battle of Tannenberg that was fought there back in 1410, when the Order of the Teutonic Knights were defeated by a joint Polish-Lithuanian army. Von Hindenburg regarded this victory as revenge for this loss. The fighting at Tannenberg occurred between the 26th and the 30th of August 1914, with intermittent battles spilling over into 1915. Although the Russians outnumbered the Germans by a factor of two, the Germans dominated the Russians through greater tactical awareness and strategy. There was another enemy that would suddenly enter the battlefield over the course of the war, and wreak havoc on the fighting men, an enemy that was not friendly to either side of the conflict, a force composed of teeth, fur and claws, guaranteed to ruin your day, an army of marauding and ravenous wolves. Hundreds of the predators had been displaced by the war that was raging across Europe and into Russia. They primarily fled from the Russian wilds where the carnivores had the reputation of being much larger in size than regular wolves. Some of the specimens were even known to reach a whopping 80 to 90 kilograms in weight. According to multiple newspaper stories published in 1917, whilst locked in heated combat, both the Russian and German troops were often attacked by large packs of the predators. In particular men who had been separated from the larger force, or were just injured and couldn't make it back to the safety of camp. The half-starved wolves were so hungry that they disregarded their natural fear of loud noises, such as gunshots and explosions, and frequently flanked disoriented and physically compromised soldiers devouring them on violent feeding frenzies. Men of both sides of the conflict would rush to help their wounded friends and battle brothers to fight off the wolves and carry them back to safety, but many men were not so fortunate and were left to fend off the packs by themselves. Most didn't survive. Machine gun nests, poison gas and booby traps were all used in a desperate attempt to deal with the attackers, but the wolves were not so easily discouraged. In fact, they became even more brazen. The soldiers began to suspect that the wolves were actually outthinking them, somehow avoiding the traps and snipers, only to come out of nowhere to prey on the injured or dying men. Even fully fit soldiers were falling victim to the vicious packs. The story goes that as the fighting intensified and the frequency of wolf attacks continued to worsen, the Russian and German troops were finally given permission by their commanding officers to form a temporary armistice and combine resources in order to fight the common enemy. Now focused solely on the wolf threat, the temporarily allied troops formed hunting parties and set out together, turning the tables on the animals and bringing the fight directly to their dens. It wasn't exactly the Christmas truce of 1914, which was happening on the Western Front around the same time. In actuality, it was in stark contrast. The soldiers hunted day and night, facing the glistening teeth of their wild enemy in sunlight and their glowing eyes by the light of the moon. Rifles blazed and creatures howled, but the men were on the offensive now, actively engaging the enemy, and the wolves were no match for this. By the end of the conflict, over 100 wolves had been slain, and hundreds more fled into the surrounding wilderness, never to be seen again. 
Man had faced the armies of the wild and reigned supreme, and when faced with a common threat, they had put aside their differences and battled that threat together, in victory. Sadly, once the wolves had been bested, the men parted ways and went back to fighting each other. But such is war, and such is life. The story is a fascinating one, as much as it is disturbing. But did the events of the story even take place at all? Did man-eating wolves actually prey upon the soldiers of World War I? Skeptics of the tale point to the lack of physical evidence as cause to dismiss the claims as a mere work of fiction. For instance, there are no known or available documents from the military on either side of the conflict. There is no official record of there ever being a formal armistice arranged by either party, and there are no recorded testimonies or witness statements to verify the events of the wolf truce at all. Skeptics would also point to the unnatural behaviour of the wolves in regards to their natural tendency to run away from loud noises as being definitive proof that these events could not have taken place. However, there are multiple reports that were intercepted coming out of Berlin, indicating that several towns and villages across Europe were indeed reporting packs of ravenous wolves that were attacking villagers and travellers in the area. The reports also indicated that the wolves were unusually large and were known to attack German soldiers fighting in the war. The public first became aware of the wolf truce when it was reported by several American newspapers in 1917. The article seems to be the same one simply reprinted in different papers. Several times I have read that the wolf truce itself happened in 1917, even though the fighting at Tannenberg was all over by that time. A publication by the Italian news magazine La Domenica del Corriere depicts an illustration on its front page of injured soldiers fighting off a rabid pack of wolves. This issue was printed on the 25th of October 1914 and it reported accounts of wolves preying on wounded and deceased soldiers after the Russian army successfully counted the Germans in Poland. It's a fact that large wolves were displaced from rural Russia by World War I. It is a fact that starving wolves become more brazen, especially in large packs. It is also a fact that instances of wolves terrorizing villages have occurred many times in the past, especially in France, with instances such as the Beast of Javadan. Even as recently as 2011, in Russia, towns were attacked by packs of large wolves, 400 or more in number. Again in Russia, large wolves stalked the town as recently as 2020, a number of them even had to be shot. Yet if I go looking into wolf attacks, the academics claim that wolves rarely ever attack people, with few cases ever reported. But a simple gander back through historical accounts proves these claims incorrect. A similar agenda seems to be surrounding man-eating sharks. This shocking story is most likely at least partially true. I have no doubt that injured and deceased soldiers were preyed upon by wolves at some point. But whether the troops declared an armistice or not is a matter of opinion. There is no solid evidence that they ever did. But is it so far-fetched? There are many reasons why such an armistice would not have been advertised by either side. They were, after all, bitter enemies. It was not in any way similar to the British and German Christmas truce, which was wholesome and tragic in equal measure. Russia also suffered an embarrassing loss at Tannenberg, which resulted in the commanding general Alexander Samsonov committing suicide. And soon after, Russia itself would split apart by civil war in 1917. And in regards to Germany, they lost on the Western Front, and thus lost World War I, leaving the country in ruins after the sanctions that followed. But without any official records or eyewitness testimonies, we will never know for sure whether there was a truce or not, whether mortal enemies joined forces to fight a common threat. But what we do know for sure is that an enemy devoid of compassion or sense of justice that is inherently endowed in us by our creator is an enemy with no moral lines and even amidst the horrors of war, human beings can still put aside their differences when confronted by such an enemy.